Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. <coughs> Excuse me. Today's date is Monday, the 2nd of November 2020, and the time has just gone 10.08 GMT. And it's been a fairly decent start to the European session. We've had a kind of a bit of volatility, but we've seen a fairly uh, respectable bounce back in European equity markets. We obviously had a fairly negative week last week, uh, concerns about uh, tougher restrictions, uh, most notably the announcement that Germany and France will be got, uh, have, have tighter restrictions. Um, we've had a number of uh, various other European economies have uh, tougher restrictions as well. Over the weekend, it was announced that England will be heading into a national lockdown, um, which, will kick, which will kick in later on this week. So um, all of that, that being said, we have seen a bit of a rebound uh, in, in Euro European stocks. Sentiment is probably driven more of a case of by the fear factor has kind of petered out slightly. Not to say that the situation has improved. <clears throat> Far from that, we're probably in, in for a period of um, lower economic activity as restrictions you know, come into play and uh, businesses you know wind down and people have most likely will end up spending less. But it seems to me that a lot of that, has, a lot of what we're going to see in terms of weaker economic activity in the next few weeks and months seems to have been already kind of factored in with the move we saw at the back end of last week, or at the very least, a certain portion of it has, if we come out of lockdown on time as, as planned, or if if things, if the health situation improves better than expected, things could turn around. But you know, for the, the move that we're seeing in upwards in the, in the stock market today it seems to be more about a kind of a, a bit of a rebound from from last week's negative move. Um, in terms of economic indicators, we've had broadly speaking positive manufacturing numbers from the major European economies today, with the exception of the UK, you know, the Spanish, the Italian, the French, the German numbers, they all came in better than expected and they all came in slightly, uh, sh showing slight improvements on the month in terms of manufacturing PMI. The UK numbers were good, they were just ever so slightly down um, on the previous month's reading, uh, but they did actually manage to top expectations. Uh, the Kaishin survey of Chinese manufacturing overnight showed a slight improvement on the month, and it also uh, came in better than expected. Um, we got a very busy week this week in terms of what to look out for. Uh, I'll just quickly jump on to the week ahead article because this week is a busy one. Um, the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under, under insights, latest news and analysis. Uh, as I mentioned, we have global manufacturing PMI numbers out today. Uh, Associated British Foods actually ended up posting uh, numbers today, even though they're planned for tomorrow. It's, an, it's quite annoying, I know, how companies just sometimes change the reporting dates. Uh, tomorrow, what's going to be in focus uh, is the US presidential election. Um, so far, it, it seems that uh, in, in, the, in opinion polls point towards a Biden victory. Um, but as you saw in, in 2016, between the, the election of President Trump and the uh, the the UK's decision to leave the European Union, opinion polls can get it wrong. On Wednesday, uh, we have the Global uh, Services PMI reports. They'll be posted. Also Wednesday, uh, we have first half figures from m and um, We got a couple of interest rate decisions on Thursday, both the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Bank of England listened up for commentary in relation to negative interest rates. Uh, that's been kind of doing the rounds for some time. Um, so it's highly likely that that will get mentioned in some shape or form on Thursday. The Federal Reserve update, well, obviously, we hopefully, hopefully, we should know the result. Uh, we have a nice, clear um, answer to the US presidential election by then. Uh, on Thursday, we also have uh, Q1 numbers coming out from Peloton. We have first half numbers coming out from Sainsbury's, and we have uh, third quarter numbers coming out from Uber. And on Friday, we have the all-important U.S. non-farm payrolls report. So we've got a couple of big central bank meetings. We have a U.S. presidential election and we have a non-farm payrolls Friday. So it really is a big week this week. Uh, speaking of non-farm payrolls, uh, for those of you who are interested, we have my colleague Michael Houston will be hosting a live webinar uh, on the day in question covering the payrolls. Um, you can sign up for it on our, on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under webinars and events. And that will kick off at 13.15 GMT on Friday, the 6th of November. Um, as I mentioned, we've had a decent start to European stocks. And for those of you who regularly watch this video, I'll do the usual rundown whereby I cover a few of the big indices, a few of the big currency pairs, and a few of, of the big commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, 
Uh, this is a bit of a common theme across all the indices. From the March lows rallied in, into June, uh, bounced back post COVID. And since then on the FTSE, because let's be fair, it's been the kind of underperformer of the big European and uh, big Western indices. We've broadly been trending, low, trading, trending lower the last few months. Uh, in fact, the lows that we saw at the back end of last week on Friday were basically down at levels last seen uh, in April, so give an indication of how how kind of how weak sentiment has been, but this is the kind of I'll be looking at, looking at this across a number of markets. Um, this this candle here, the shape of it, has the potential to be a hammer formation. And for those of you who regularly watch my videos, the most recent video, the most recent chart of the week video I've done uh, is on the the DAX, the German market, talking about could we see a hammer formation? Could we see a rebound on the DAX? and it, it give you more details about that but essentially the long wick on this candle here and notice how the body of it um it, notice how the body of it um the the, the close that were that was notice that it closed near the high of the day not quite at the high of the day but near towards the high of the day and in fact and in fact the the close of this candle was even above the, um well above the, both the open and the close of the previous day for it to be a hammer formation, you'd want to have you want to see confirmation in that you want to see the market move on higher from here, and we are seeing that we you know we're off the we're, the lows of today's session is, is well off, well above the lows of Friday's session. Even the body of this candle looks ex ex exceptionally bullish as well. So we'll see how that plays out. This we could be so we could be in for a rebound on the FTSE 100, and should that be the case, we could head back toward this zone here, 5,700. You know we, we saw a bit of con we saw a bit of consolidation in that area if kind of there thereabouts acted as support on the way down and also there thereabouts kind of acted as resistance as well uh, on the, uh, before we had another leg lower on Wednesday so if we take off 5700 we could potentially head back up towards this blue line here the 50 day moving average and that comes into play at 5901 notice how we did see a bit of consolidation there's been a few occasions where the 50 day moving average has or that general area has acted as resistance now to be fair on these areas here it always managed to trade above and trade through the 50 day, move, 50 day moving average but it never made massive ground going too far beyond it so this general area could act as, as resistance should we have a move a sharp move to the upside um, conversely, if you do have a fairly decent sharp move to the downside and the market turns over on itself and continues in the broader, wider negative trend, if you take off uh, the lows of last week uh, at 5,488, that could take us back down towards this area here, then around 5,330. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany in the DAX, similar situation. We've had a multi-month high in September, the highest that were the last seen since uh, since February, March, since the pandemic was really kind of uh, taking hold. Since then, we've had the lower low, the lower high, and the aggressive lower low. And once again, the lows that we saw at the back end of last week were levels last seen since May. So it's you know multi-month low, but like I said, which, I'm, which this has the potential to be a hammer formation here. The long wick. Look at the body of this candle. Uh, that the, it, it closed almost near the highs of the session, which kind of adds more weight to the argument that it is a hammer formation. But we would want to see that confirmed. We would want to see the market move higher from here. And so far, we are seeing that. So we could be in for a rebound and a continuation of a push higher on the DAX. Should that be the case, we could head back up towards the kind of twelve thousand mark or just beyond that. This red line here. 200 day moving average which comes into play at 12,080 and notice how that particular metric acted nicely as support back in late July and also ever so slightly acted as support uh, in late October as well so keep an eye out for 12,000 12,080 to the upside if we turn turns over turns over on itself yet again and takes out the recent lows of 11,330 it could take us back down towards 11,000 you know so kind of it's a relative, you know, it'd be the next kind of big number to the downside. And also, we did see some consolidation in that area uh, when the market was kind of moved, it was uh, back in May when the market was trying to kind of trying to press on higher. Take a look now at what's going on over in the US. Notice how there's a kind of a clear pattern forming within the kind of indices whereby we've had the kind of multi month high. Uh, highs that were achieved in say in recently in September, we have a move to the downside, the lower low, the lower high, and yet again another lower low. 
on Friday, we, we had multi-month lows, similar situation, appears to be a hammer formation here. In fact, notice how the body of this, ca of this candle here uh, completely eclipses or engulfs the previous day's body as well. You know, we, we're, we're, seeing a, we're seeing a move to the upside post what we think could be a hammer formation, adding weight to the argument that this, we are going to see a, a bounce back in the, uh, in, in the Dow Jones. Should that be the case, we can look at heading back towards this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, and that comes into play at 27,289. Notice how that metric, the 100 moving average, acted as support back in late September. And the metric has been of importance in the past. It makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. Um, conversely, if the market does manage to turn over on itself and it takes out the recent lows of, say, a Friday, we could then, you know, and we have a decent break below 26,000. It could take us back down toward this area, the lows of, of mid July, in around 25,418. And if you move and if you have a decent break beyond the 100 day moving average, it could take us back up toward this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which on a few occasions acted nicely as support not that long ago. So keep an eye out for 27,925. Take a look now at the S&P 500, which has been the strongest of the bunch because the highs that it achieved in September were, actually, were in fact all-time highs. But you know, what did we see since then? We had the lower low, we had a, had a lower high, another lower low, decent rebound into mid-October. But the highs of October um, failed to take out the highs of September. What happens then? The market has a lower low, lower high, similar situation. Falls down here. Hits well. In fact, it was a multi-week lower or a, a one-month low there. They're about achieved uh, on Friday, and similar situation. Notice how e even the shape of the candle on Friday the 30th of October on the S&P 500, on the Dow Jones, on the DAX, and on the FTSE 100 all look reasonably similar. They all kind of look like that kind of hammer formation. We're all see. We're all, follow up the next day. What do you know? We're seeing. But appears to be a very kind of bullish day so far on the on this candle we could look to press on higher from here on the s p 500 should that be the case we could be looking at retesting this area here this line here in a 3341 a move beyond that could take us towards this blue line here at the 50 moving average notice how it acted nicely as resistance um on tuesday the, the 27th the market traded briefly above it but couldn't couldn't quite a uh, break beyond it. So keep an eye out for that area, uh, just, just north of 3,400. If the market though does manage to turn over on itself again and takes out the recent lows, we could be heading back down toward this zone here, down around 3,200. Moving on now to currencies. Now, it is worth noting that the US dollar index in the last few weeks and months has been acting as a fairly decent um, flight to quality play for, 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 um, for, for, for traders. So. Whenever you've seen uncertainty uh, in, in equity markets recently, we've, we've often seen a move to the upside in the US dollar. Um, I think conversely, there's been days when, when the stock markets have performed fairly well and you've seen a, a decline in the US dollar. So, so if you, if, if, even if you just trade currencies, it is worth your while keeping an eye on what's going on with stock markets in terms of risk attitude. Um, but you know, if you take a look at what's been happening the last few weeks uh, in the in, in, in euro dollar, it hit its highest level in over two years in September. We traded sideways for a bit, then we kind of drift, drifted back lower, which is not, not uncommon. You know, we give, have a bit of a pullback after hitting multi-year highs. We've had the higher high, the higher low. The highs of, of late October failed to retest the highs of uh, early September. We've moved below the 50 moving average, this blue line here. We're now traded down on the 130 moving average. We're just ever so slightly below it. We're pretty near the lows of late September. So we're talking like, you know, near kind of one month lows. What's going to happen next? Are we going to take out the lows of September and then open, potentially head back down towards this zone here in round 114? Or are we going to continue in the wider upward trend? So if, if, you, can, if you hold above the September lows in around one spot, 16, 12, there's a possibility that we could just head back up towards the 50 moving average in at one spot, 1782. A move beyond that could take us back up toward this area in at one spot, 1880, the highs of late October. But if you take out the if you take out the lows here, we'd then be looking at new multi-month lows back at levels last seen in late July. And there isn't really a whole lot of areas in terms of consolidation or support zones uh, in this region here. So we could 
a decent move to the downside at below the September lows, the late September lows, could put us on course back down towards 114. Um, taking a look now, pound dollar. Keep, obviously, keep in mind the US dollar index. The dollar, in, the dollar is the it's a common component. The highs that we saw in September on pound dollar were the highs. We're about eight and a half, nearly nine month highs. What did we see then? We had a lower low. We had a lower high, lower low. We had a six week high here. Multi week high was achieved in late October, but we notice how we've been drifting lower ever so slightly. To be fair, it's you know the UK. EU trade talks are, are, are going on. There, for the time being, there's a bit of cautious optimism that the UK and the European Union will come to some sort of an agreement by the middle of November, but obviously there are no guarantees. And that's why there hasn't been a huge amount of volatility uh, in, in, in pound sterling recently. This year, this positive move is a kind of anticipation of, of the hopes that something will be achieved in November. We've been drifting lower, but notice how the pound isn't tanking. You know, there's, there's, there's a bit of a kind of a view that even if the traders aren't exceptionally bullish on sterling, they're not. It doesn't seem to me that they're overly willing to go and take aggressive short position. That's why we've only been drifting over the last few sessions, and we're still holding above the 100 moving average in a one spot 28.78. And while we hold above that metric, it's likely that the kind of wider trend of the last few months could continue. If we press on higher from here, and we look, to, we could be looking at retesting the highs of late late October in a one spot 31.76. Beyond that, head towards one spot 32 or one spot 3269. If you do have a move below the 100 moving average, it could take us back down toward this zone where, the, where this red line here is the 200 moving average, and just below that uh, is the lows of latest September. So, we, we, the zone of one spot 2709 um, down towards the lows of, sept of, of, um, of late September in a one spot 20, one spot 2675. Coming on now to commodities, heading towards the end of the video, starting off with gold. Gold, like I said, is, is because of the strong, strongish inverse relationship between gold and the US dollar, there's been times where by traders have been in risk off mode and we've seen aggressive moves lower in stocks. Historically, gold has often benefited from that, but because it seems that, tra that, that, that US dollar has become a fairly popular play, in terms of flats, in terms of safe haven moves, we any if we ever see stocks tumble, we often see the dollar rise, and sometimes a strong dollar impacts the gold market. And if you look at the price action gold the last few months, an all-time high was achieved in August, so it's clearly in a very bullish trend. We had a sharp move to the downside afterwards, which is not not uncommon. Trading in a range range bond for a while, the levels that we we dropped down to in late September were like you know um, multi-month lows. Ever since then, we've been trying to pull back, but we're sort of kind of, you know, tra trading in a bit of a range. The lows of last week were, were, were once again, you know, multi-week lows. It's the broader trend seems to be in play, but but there isn't doesn't appear to be much appetite to really drive gold too much higher, much too too much higher. So, if you do hold above the recent lows in at 18.48, you know, the wider trend could continue. We nearly need to be taking out this blue line here at the 50 moving average in at 19.15. If you notice how it, the market tried to uh, make break beyond it in late October, which but it, but it failed to, a move beyond that level, um, beyond the 50 moving average, could then bring this, this area into play in at 19.73, the highs of mid-September. And if we go beyond that, 2000 would be the, kind of the next big number to keep an eye on. If, on the other hand, though, the market fails to, you know, runs into potentially runs into resistance again at the 50 moving average, and if it turns lower, if we take out the recent lows of late of only last week, we could be looking heading back down towards 1848, and a move below that could take us down toward this zone here in at 1800. And lastly, I come on to the oil market, Brent crude oil, looking at the January contract. So. Um, the oil market, the energy market, is very sensitive to perceptions about what's going on with the global economy. Um, essentially, if, if there there are, seems to be a lot of concern that the lockdowns are going to have a, 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 have negative uh, impacts on the various different economies, and um, and in turn, demand is likely to be, likely to be hit. Hence, why even in today's session, uh, we, we we saw Brent crude oil fall back to its lowest level since mid-May. 
granted, there's very a, uh, there's very a long wick on this candle, which denotes a decision. And if you remember when I was talking about the long wicks that we saw, what uh, what could be a hammer formation on the likes of the DAX and the Dow Jones and the S and P 500 and the FTSE 100, this could potentially be the turn out to be the case on the uh, on the OMR, on, on Brent crude oil. Potentially, we would need to see it close higher though. For the time being, it's the candle is still is, we're still seeing it is a red candle in that. For the time being, the market is trading below where it opened, but we would need to see we, we need to close above. Where we opened and have a positive candle, and we could, uh, we could, so we could potentially see a hammer formation on this camp on this on the oil market. But let's not forget the market has been an aggressive downtrend recently. If we do break below the recent lows, and then at the bullish, the negative, the bearish trend continues, we could then be looking heading back toward this zone here, down at 30, 33 spot 44. If you do have a rebound, we could see support or resistance rather come into play in around this area. 40, you know, the, the next big number up, but also the, the, we did see a bit of consolidation in that zone before. That's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.